What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, just welcome. My name is Gemma Jade, but today we are going to be discussing the almost vanished people who were stalked in the woods. Now, I have an almost vanished series on here and it seems to be one that you guys really enjoy. I'm going to premiere this video as I was asked to do, which I thought was so incredibly awesome. Um, and I want to kind of just get started. On this channel, I've done several videos on the almost vanished, people who either disappeared and came back with strange stories to tell, or people who almost ended up missing one way or another, usually in some sort of encounter involving some unknown entity or creature. I've also discussed with you guys here at length, paranormal or supernatural forces and or entities luring or trying to lure people to their death and doom luring people further and further into the woods in order to do whatever it is they do in order to make the person disappear because I don't know. Fortunately, sometimes they come back with wild and crazy sounding stories, which most of the time don't even sound so wild and crazy to many of us here on this channel and in, and in this community. Sometimes too, they come back with no memory of what happened or how they ended up where they did. Most of the time, when I dig a bit deeper and look years later, the person still hasn't come up with any memories at all of what happened to them. And in the rare case that they do start getting some memory back, they don't want to talk about it. They absolutely refuse. Today, though, I want to specifically talk about the woods. It's one of my favorite topics to cover and discuss on my channel because there's just so much ground to cover and I love researching. From cryptids to unknown entities to invisible forces not of nature that come to take us humans away to who knows where to do who knows what with and to us. More specifically than just covering things happening in the woods today, in the cases of the almost vanished, I want to discuss people who say they were hunted, to put it in no uncertain terms, as that's exactly what I believe to have been happening in these encounters as well. Sit back, relax, cuddle up under your favorite blankie, maybe grab a drink, because these encounters are truly terrifying. Encounters of people being hunted in the woods and feeling like they're part of the almost vanished. So, as I just mentioned, and I find this so incredibly fascinating, one of the main factors in these encounters is the fact that, in most cases, more often than not, the presence or whatever it is, is felt more than it is seen. Oftentimes, too, it's heard, and it seems to be a sound that isn't of this earth. It, it's not of this plane of existence, nothing we've ever heard before. To briefly discuss the more common factors of these almost vanishings with you, there's also the complete, total, and sudden absence of sound as well. Everything in the woods just seems to stop right down to the wind refusing to blow anymore. The state of unidentified and uncharacteristic fear and primal dread that creep into the person at one point or another is brought up more often than not as well. In North Carolina, United States, at a place called Stone Mountain State Park, an avid hiker and outdoors woman named Chelsea, because I don't use real names and I don't use um, internet handles, I guess is the way to put it, we'll call her Chelsea, tells her tale of what happened to her one day when she was out for a hike in the state park near where she lived in the Blue Ridge Mountains. She claimed she was not once but twice stalked by some unseen force or being and she knew with everything she had inside of her that whatever it was wasn't stalking her to take her out to a fancy dinner. I'll just let Chelsea tell the first encounter for you. Quote, this happened last year while hiking with my boyfriends and our dog. We had seen a couple of the waterfalls that day and were going to hike to the lower falls. There had been very heavy rain for a few days and I knew this trail had several creek crossings. I decided I didn't want to get wet and told my boyfriend to go on without me and I would wait for him. The falls were only another half mile or so ahead. Boyfriend and dog go on across the creek and disappear out of my line of sight. As soon as I couldn't see them anymore, I was suddenly aware of how quiet the woods were. No birds chirping or squirrels rustling leaves. I don't usually get spooked, but all of a sudden I had this overwhelming sense of fear and dread. I felt as if something was watching me and I couldn't shake the feeling. I had an urge to run after my boyfriend and started the creek crossing when I saw him come dashing back towards me. He too had an overwhelming sense of dread and didn't get 10 minutes down the trail before he turned back and ran to me. He said he couldn't shake the feeling that something was going to attack me. This was around 11 a.m. on a summer day, so not very likely a big cat or bear would be out at this time, end quote. 
As I've already explained multiple times throughout and across all of these videos, that sense of dread and unmistakably eerie and oftentimes sudden quiet of everything in nature is very common. Terrifying, as I know from my first-hand account of the Glimmer Man. In her second encounter, she remembers that same terrifying feeling of being stalked and watched creeping up on her, and this time it was accompanied by a strange and unidentifiable sounds throughout the trees above her. She said of the experience, quote, This incident was very scary because I was alone with my dog. We were hiking the same section of Stone Mountain, but a different trail called Wolf Rock. On the way up, I had seen many trees that were scorched, but could have been due to lightning. I have pics of the trees, just assumed it was lightning burns. Started getting an ominous feeling, so I started picking up my pace to head back. When I was about a mile from my car, I heard what can only be described as a supersonic boom. It shook the ground and rattled the trees. It spooked me and my dog so bad, we ran most of the way back to the car. Tried later describing the sound to my boyfriend, but to no avail, since I had never heard anything like it. Not gunfire, not a plane, not a rock slide, which I've all heard before. But while reading another person's story on this site, it sparked my memory. They described the sound they heard as a giant sledgehammer hitting a tin wall. That's the best way I can describe the noise I heard. That metallic bang reverberating through the woods. Very unsettling. End quote. What in the world could this noise have been and where in the world could it have been suddenly coming from? Where in the world, quote unquote, I guess would be the operative phrase here, wouldn't it, right? It's most likely not of this world. And that's exactly why I think it's so hard for people to come forward and tell their stories because some of it's just unexplainable and very hard for us as human beings to wrap our head around. This metallic noise isn't exclusive to Chelsea's experience though and tends to come up time and time again in these encounter stories. Another noise that I come across often in my research of these specific types of encounters is a knocking sound that seemingly comes from the trees. As though something or someone is knocking on the trees themselves, only there's no one in sight. Another woman who posted on the same site as our Chelsea here had her very own creepy and fear-inducing experience while out in the woods with some friends. I'll call this woman Jamie. This one happened in Algonquin Provincial Park in Ontario, Canada. Jamie was out in the canoe with two friends on a bright and sunny, beautiful day inside the park at a place called Rock Lake. The three friends decided to camp out on the shore of the lake for the night. Once night fell and the darkness came, the wind became quite vicious. It was roaring and whipping and blowing and whirring everything everywhere. In the middle of the night, though, after all of the friends retired to their respective tents or beds, it wasn't specified, the wind suddenly and quite abruptly just stopped. It just completely and totally came to a halt. It was described as if the wind had, quote, somehow been turned off like someone simply flipped a switch, end quote. It wasn't like it slowed down little by little and became a gentle breeze. That's not what happened. It was roaring one moment and completely non-existent the next. Jamie also described there being no sounds of insects or animals, nothing scurrying or roaming about like squirrels or deer. There was absolute and total silence where just a moment ago the wind was so loud you wouldn't have heard someone a foot in front of you without straining your ears. The wind situation alone alarmed her, but she was also overcome with a sense of fear and dread and terror, which seemed to come upon her as suddenly as the wind had stopped blowing. One minute, it was just there. All of her senses were on high alert and the hairs on the back of her neck and on her arms were standing up. I described this exact same thing in my encounter and said it was reminiscent to me of how the air changes right before an electrical storm. The dread she felt was almost tangible. That's how strong it was. Her friends were still asleep and she was the only one awake and noticing all of this happening. She went on to explain, quote, I wanted to wake my friends, but I thought they would think I was just over worried. The silence was overbearing and I began to feel the most intense sense of dread I've ever had seemingly for no reason. I then heard what sounded like loud knocks on the trees in the distance. I don't know what they could have been, but it was making me feel worse and more scared. The wind eventually came back after about 20 minutes and I tried to get more sleep. I nearly dozed off when I heard a sound in my head, sort of like when you get hurt in video games, like a high pitched frequency that got higher in frequency as it went on. I had an intense feeling of dread at this moment too, and I stayed up to sunrise and couldn't sleep. I didn't even mention it to my friends because they were asleep and would probably have just shrugged it off, end quote. When she and her friends were all awake the next day, Jamie decided it would be best not to say anything. As they pushed their canoes in the lake to go out into the water again, though, she couldn't help but keep thinking about what had happened the night before. It was obviously very much so on her mind. 
She was racked with worry and racked with fear. And for what reason? She still didn't have a clue. The friends canoed their way to a place called Rose Island that day and all but Jamie were jovial and enjoying their trip thus far. Rose Island would change all of that though almost instantaneously. While still in their canoes, all of the friends heard these strange and somewhat threatening sounds coming from the woods surrounding where they were sitting in their canoes. So they're in their canoes and the noises are coming from the surrounding woods where they were going to dock and get out and hike. It was almost like something somewhere out in those woods didn't want them to come any closer. Jamie said, quote, Later, we canoed to a place in Rock Lake called Rose Island. On this island, as we collected wood for our fire, I began to hear a variety of weird sounds. The weirdest was a knocking sound, which consisted of five very low frequency knocks. I could not think of an animal that would make this sound. I have heard woodpeckers and they are much higher pitched. We then heard what sounded like wood banging on trees, but from different directions and from different directions as well. I don't know what that means, guys. I'm just quoting. Later, we were hiking and I saw a black mass in the forest, which looked kind of like a black bear. We ran away and decided to leave camp and come home because we all had had a complete feeling of dread after seeing it, end quote. So what are we left with here, guys? Let's unpack this just a little bit. What was this quote unquote black mass? Could it really have been just a bear? While bears can be very scary and extremely dangerous at times, Black bears aren't so predatory unless you come between a male and its food or a female and her cubs. I know this personally as I have had said mama and cubs come right up to my porch stairs or directly in front of my screen door. I have video. A few nights later, I received a visit on my porch from the daddy bear who came and opened up my recycling bin because he smelled a cardboard I had accidentally left there from a frozen pizza. Otherwise, it was all random boxes from shipping and shopping and things like that. Anyways, I just don't think laying your eyes on what could possibly be a black bear running around would be enough to terrify me to run home. Yeah, I'd want to get away from it. I mean, bears can swim, but I don't know. I have a feeling that bear is what their minds came up with in order to make more sense of what they were seeing and hearing. Even though, if you know anything about bears, they mostly don't bang wood against trees or make the sort of noises and sounds described by Jamie in her encounters. Could this have been a Bigfoot? I wonder because of the strange noises. I have a lot of Bigfoot hunters as friends from being in this community. Hi, Connor. <laughs> and I've looked them up and I've heard the alleged sounds they make. And this somehow rings true to me. I obviously cannot be sure, though, without more information. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. There's another report that I came across that had this strange wood knocking sound. I'll call him Danny and he says he worked for federal law enforcement at the time of his encounter. He was out camping with a friend in the Chiricahua National Monument area in southeastern Arizona and I'm sorry if I butchered that. The two men decided to go for a hike and as they were out there deep in the woods hiking along the trails the weather took a turn for the weird. It all of a sudden became, quote, unseasonably foggy and gloomy, end quote. And right after this happened, a series of bizarre events took place. Danny reported, quote, shortly after the fog came in, the last part of the bad weather changed. We heard a strange set of three knocking noises from behind a hanging rock at the top of the gorge we were in at that point. It sounded vaguely like a heavy tool being slammed against the rock in the cadence of two knocks a quarter second apart, a short second delay, then a third knock. This three knock sequence repeated several times from that location. We stopped as soon as we heard it and we were immediately made uneasy for whatever reason. After several sets of knocks, it stopped and we started moving about 50 yards when we heard the same several set of knocks from the opposite side of the gorge, then again from a third position that was once again above us on the rim of the gorge near some large monolithic rocks. My friend said something to the effect of, hurry up and let's get out of here, I don't like this. And we started moving out of there at a constant jog. For the next few minutes, we heard a few more sets of knocks from the three different locations. I felt very much in danger for my life for some reason. At one point, we stopped at an outcropping on the rim of the gorge. We both had our hands on our holsters and had a quick look at the ridge above us. We had instinctively grabbed cover before doing so. That shows just how disturbed we were. When we made it to the trail crossroads at the end of the loop near the visitor center, we had lost the feeling of dread about a half mile back. 
We went to the visitor center and we asked the ranger there if there were any crews working in the area or if there were any groups of people doing something that sounded like the knocking we had described. She said that it sounded like we heard woodpeckers. I played my roommate a clip of a woodpecker native in the area via YouTube on my phone and the sound was vaguely similar, but the tapping of the woodpecker was much faster and it wasn't quite as deep toned. He said, well, that does kind of sound like it. We probably just heard that and got freaked out, but I don't agree. But I felt as if I would be embarrassing to admit I still felt something very weird actually happened. So I feigned agreement. We then drove home, end quote. It wasn't until later that day when they both gave it more thought that the two realized and decided that what they had heard definitely was not woodpeckers. They had no clue what they had come upon, but were glad to have escaped it with their lives. Could the banging on the rocks and trees be the sign of a Bigfoot about to attack? I mean, it sounds just as reasonable as anything else we're talking about here, right? Our last encounter for this video comes from a woman who was camping in Big Bend National Park with a friend and her husband. That's in Southern Texas, United States, if you don't already know. I'll call this one Jill for the sake of the story. Jill explained the terrain was flat and the area was desolate and remote. She and her companions decided it would quote unquote be fun to go for a night hike out in the nearest trail to where they had set up their camp for the night. They all agreed it would be pretty easy since the terrain was flat and the night was brightly lit by the full moon and the clear sky above them. Jill did try and take a precaution though and she set up some rock piles earlier in the day when they had hiked the same trail in order to help them if they had decided to hike the same trail again that night find their way to where they were going and back to their camp without any issues or getting lost. It was just around 10 p.m. when they had all finished their dinner and set out on what was to be a most terrifying journey through these woods and trails. Jill recounted, quote, the first 10 minutes were pretty uneventful. We were all in good spirits. Suddenly, we hear a scuttling noise from about 50 feet away coming from behind us. Having been used to animal noises at night, we wrote it off as a critter. A few minutes later, we heard the same noise a bit closer and sounded like a bigger animal. There are black bears here, but we weren't in the area they're normally sighted. Like I said, the landscape was wide open and we didn't see anything with our flashlights. We were a bit uneasy, but willing to go on. The rock piles had been doing a good job of leading us in the right direction. All at once, I stopped feeling absolute terror. It's an indescribable feeling I'd see many others reference. I knew we were in danger. I just didn't know why. I looked to my friend and her husband who both looked as terrified as I felt. There was no sound, no wind. Then in an instant, the most inhuman scream erupted seemingly from all around us. We all froze for what felt like minutes, but I'm sure it was just a few seconds. I don't remember making the decision to run back, but the next thing I do remember, we were all running. We had made it pretty far out, even though I thought I was running in the direction of our camp. I remember scanning for the rock piles I had made, but not being able to find any and almost turning back, thinking we were headed in the wrong direction, but had this instinct that told me not to. We made a rather large rock I knew was on the route back to the campsite. I also remember putting a rock pile beside that rock. I went to check if it was there to make sure we were headed back to our camp campsite. The rocks were still there, but they had been knocked over. This set off all of the alarms, and I told my friend and my husband that we had to go back to the camp as soon as possible. We made it back a few minutes later, and by the time we got back, I was entirely freaked out and didn't want to stay anymore. I think my husband was as well, but my friend convinced us that it was just wildlife, so we stayed in the tent that night. I don't know if it was connected, but there were scuttling and footsteps around the tent all night long. We did not do any more primitive hiking that trip and opted instead for a campsite in one of the community camps. I've never felt that feeling before or since, and I've been in the woods at night plenty of times. The next day I went out to check if all the rock piles had been knocked down. They had. I don't think an animal would deliberately go around knocking over the markers. That's what really makes me think it was sentient. I don't know what it was, but I don't want to know, and I'm glad we made it out, end quote. I've got to admit to you all, I have never been camping. I'm not sure if stories like this make me want to never attempt it or if they make me want to go even more than I already do because I really do want to go camping. It seems like something was purposefully toying with them. Again, Bigfoot comes to mind. What do you guys think? That's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments. I'm trying to be more mindful of the comments, like at least for the first day or a couple of days and pinning the comment that's like the funniest or that makes the most sense or just that I like the most. I don't know. <laughs> I got to start looking at comments and I do apologize that I've been neglecting them. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. 
and spread the love by sharing this video. Please be sure and check out the description box to see what I'm up to for the rest of the week. If you don't normally catch my live streams, it would be awesome if you could do that. Come on in and say hi. On Wednesday nights from 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, I am right here pulling one card intuitive oracle for anybody who comes in and wants one first come first serve basis on Friday nights tentatively I'm over on paranormal shop chop shop paranormal chop shop from 9 to 11 p.m. also Eastern but um, due to some things going on right now with my family I've been kind of in and out over there but you should go over and check that out too with Sunny Conway my Sunny Bear and Papa Willie and Chad Smith, Jake Smith, check out the Chad Smith podcast, check out Oracles and Beyond Cassie, check out Bigfoot and On, check out UFO Garage. I mean, all of my sister and brother channels, Spaghetti Lee, Trippy Times with Josh, Josh Casey. I'm going to try to leave a list in the description box of the channels that I kind of affiliate myself with a little bit. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Time, of course, I am on Spaced Out Radio. We own the night, and I am owning the night every weekend with Big Willie Townsend, the fedorable fedora-wearing John Hudson, and the beautiful Finn Lizzie Borden. We talk everything woo. We drive the woo train, and we will come and pick you up all aboard, right? I don't know, guys. I guess I'm just in a goofy mood. Anyways, if you would like a personal intuitive oracle reading from me, please email me at moonbearoracle at gmail.com. All one word, moonbearoracle at gmail.com. Also, go on over and subscribe to Moon Bear Oracle if you haven't already. I've got lots of good things coming up. Be patient with me as you guys are, and I love you for it.